Smith encabezaba giras llenando estadios y gastando casi tan rápido como ganaban. Lots of cocaine, lots of vodka, lots of girls, and lots of driving fast and just doing whatever the I pleased. Thinking every night was Saturday, you know. Well, we cultivated that bad boys from Boston thing, so, you know, in a way we were rewarded for being irresponsible. The drugs and the debauchery, that band definitely wins the prize hands down I mean they were wilder than the stones they were wilder than Zeppelin En medio del circo viajero de sexo, droga y rock and roll Steven Tyler empezó a salir con la modelo de Playboy de 22 años Vivi Buell I took her to Germany with me and um, I broke up with her And the next thing I heard, she's pregnant. We had only been dating about three weeks or a month when I found out. Steven dice que nunca supo si la hija era suya. Y cuando Vivi volvió con el rockero Todd Rodgren, la pareja acordó criar a la bebé Liv como su propia hija. And there was a part of me that was completely in denial and just wanted Liv to be Todd's. So I had no problem living that denial fantasy. And so coupled with the drug doing that we were doing at the time and the lifestyle I had with the band, I didn't hear anything about it for four or five or six years. Steven admite que no estaba preparado para la paternidad en aquel entonces. Él y Aerosmith entraban en el capítulo más decadente y deprimente de su historia, la grabación del quinto álbum, Draw the Line. En marzo de 77, el grupo rentó una propiedad al norte de Nueva York e instalaron un estudio de grabación en un ex convento conocido como The Cynical. Man, now that place was like an asylum, okay. What do they say, the, uh, the nuts are running the asylum? That's what's going on over there. No, no. I don't know if we did any of those sessions or made any of that record straight. The drug thing got a lot more intense. People started experimenting with harder narcotics. People were getting way too high. When Joe arrived, he went up to the fourth floor, found a large living space, and didn't come down for four or five days. Just stayed up there. Didn't even see him. He'd knock on his door. He'd be, go away. When you're involved with heroin and cocaine at the level that people are taking and smoking it and that kind of stuff, it does change your personality. I mean, you, you do things that, you know, you normally wouldn't do. Joe Perry was up in the attic in his room up there. He had, he had a pistol range. He was shooting up there and stuff. And he was shooting guns. And I was shooting up, shooting guns and say, look, there's the range going on. People were shooting. Bullets were flying. It was insane. People, drugs and guns, you know, they don't go together. And, you know, we all got in deeper and deeper and deeper until it was a lot more fun and took us to places that we never thought we'd ever go. It was the end of a grand era. Everybody was tripping. Everybody had blown the room. Everybody was gacked to the nines. As stoned as you could be, it was truly days full of night. It was just a matter of time before we all killed ourselves. You had music. Aerosmith. 